Welcome back to Jazz Car 2016, presented by uh, our good friends at VMD Vibes. So uh, we're here again in the Palace of Glittering Delight, which is Vaba Lava in Telescovy in Tallinn. And the green tea is brewing, the ukulele is tuned up, so uh, let's welcome Becca Stevens. This is called Canyon Dust. Although you may have thought that you did right Your selfish choice to leave three hedging eggs Has made a canyon in our chest Your precious nest has three We shovel dirt and seeds of trust We've made from canyon dust to fill Trying to lead a role that just didn't fit you to be there for ourselves. We are learning to fill the shoes that you never wanted to throw them away, throw them away, throw them out. That you did right your selfish move to flee three fledging. Rebecca Stevens, thank you very much. That was awesome. Um, thank you. So, uh, you've, um, so, so you're from uh, North Carolina originally, yeah? That's right. Is that where you live now? No, nope, I've been in New York in various boroughs for the last um, almost 15 years. So. Okay, because um, North Carolina for me is where people like Whiskey Town and Ryan Adams have come from. Uh, have, um, has that kind of uh, alt country sound influenced your music at all? It sounds like it probably has. I would say that especially Appalachian folk music um, has influenced my music. My dad raised us on like bluegrass and Appalachian folk music. And um, you, you, you still you still look back at that sort of folk scene, that Appalachian folk scene for for um, for inspiration now, or um, do you look at other things as well for inspiration? Definitely um, Appalachian folk. Bluegrass and and also Irish folk music um, always inspire me, and um, also so does West African music and um, all kinds of classical music and like current indie pop and yeah I I love music. <laughs> well, yeah, and one of the great things about Jazz Car is that there's such diversity of music here. I mean, uh, did you get a chance to listen to any of the concerts last night, or have you? Just I come did. In yeah, I went to Aldi Miola's concert last night in the big hall, and it was beautiful. 
I mean, uh, it's it's the fact that you can you can have traditional jazz alongside modern jazz alongside uh, well, um, would, would you call it country or folk? What you're doing? I don't know. What would you call it? <laughs> Maybe it's best not to put it in a box. But um, so uh, you you worked with uh, Snarky Puppy beforehand, and that's. Um, that's a group that's really, really popular in Estonia. I've heard so much about oh, it. Cool. Um, but um, ha has your work, your collaborations, your working groups uh, influenced your solo work, do you think? I would say so. I think that all the, the different permutations that my music takes me influences my solo music in some way. Um, and I would definitely say so. Okay. Well, um, we'll come right back to this after another song. So uh, what are you going to play for us next? I was thinking about playing something brand new for you. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I have a, a, a new body of music that I'm working on that's, that I'm going to be recording later this year. And um, I was thinking about playing one of the songs from that. So has this ever been before heard? It's been heard, but it's never been recorded. And I've only performed it a small number of times. So uh, V Andy Vibes and Jazz Car has an exclusive today. Um, live session with Becca Stevens. Let's let's hear the new track. Okay. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> so this is called a charango. This instrument. It's um, you can find them in Peru or Bolivia. This one's Bolivian, and I bought it in North Carolina. Um, at a at a bar, that a bartender had one that he was trying to sell, so I bought mine at a bar in North Carolina.
life's but a moment's dream. Well, it's not my job to give the tunes. It's 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 just it's just my job to make you guys look good. But um, me and, and him. Um, you best pick up the microphone. Oh, um, yeah. okay. So so th th this thing is amazing. Um, how, how many strings does this have? Is it um, ten? Ten. But, okay. But um, four of them are in unison. Um, four of the sets are in unison, and then the ones in the very middle are in octaves. I mean, shape-wise, it actually reminds me of Paul McCartney's bass guitar. You know, it's, <laughs> it's got that kind of Coke bottle shape to it. But um, they're, they're, um, s Sometimes you'll see them made out of armadillo shells. Okay. Like with the hair still on it and everything. And this, this carving in the back, it's a Native American carving, yeah? I think like a Peruvian flute player. Yeah. So, so this is originally from, well, so, so this particular one is from, do you know where it's from, Bolivia or Peru? This one's from Bolivia, right, yeah. Right, I only know because it says so on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but, so so how, how did you come across this in a bar in North Carolina? This isn't the kind of thing most people do. Um, I was playing a smaller one that didn't have this fancy pickup on it. Um, and the bartender said, I'm trying to sell a Trango. Do you want one? And I said, no, thanks. I already have a Trango. And then he said, yeah, but mine's really special. You should see it. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so he showed it to me, and I was like, yes, I will buy that Trango. <laughs> that was how it happened. And uh, have you thought about visiting the source of the Drango, maybe going to Bolivia to do a short tour or to work musicians there? If you build it, I will come. Wonderful. Um <laughs> So, so um, like, obviously, if you come to a festival like Jazz Car, you get to go backstage and you get to mix with the other musicians. Uh, but you've pres presumably done a lot of talking to musicians over the years. So which musician has said, um, said something which strikes you as being wisdom or which musician has passed on some knowledge which you've always remembered? Everything that comes out of David Crosby's mouth is either, like ultimate the ultimate wisdom or something that could be in like a toilet book you know like just like these phrases that you put in a book that you read while you're on the toilet um some of them are like r-rated and some of them are for kids too I, I imagine most of david crosby's stories are r-rated aren't they half about half of them and the other ones will make you cry happy tears and um when, when was the last time you saw him so um, have you ever worked with him Yes, and the last time I saw him was the final session of his new solo record, which um, he just recorded. He just finished recording in New York, and um, he recorded a song of mine on that that I sang some backup vocals on. And we worked together. We met on the Snarky Puppy um, extravaganza, and we've worked together a couple times since then, and we have plans to work together later this year. Oh, well, that's, that's great. So can we expect a record in the middle of next year, maybe? Yep. Um, February, actually, is, the, is the, the ideal date that we're planning towards. Okay. Well, um, if, if you want to bring David Crosby back to Estonia with you, then, then, um, then that, that, that would obviously be amazing. But uh... If you build it, we will come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Um, it, um, if, if, if you look back at uh, classic albums, I mean, we're talking about uh, real giants now, like David Crosby and so uh -huh. on. I mean, um, do, do, you, do you have a particular album which, uh, which, which you think um, influenced you more than any other? Or is, is there one that's been on constant loop for the last 10 years or something? Oh, my God, 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 oh, my God. Um, this question always makes me start sweating immediately. And um, I mean, I can tell you, if you went through all of the things that I've ever listened to and tried to find, like, you know how iTunes sometimes shows you your most listened to tracks? It would probably be 
either Bjork or Radiohead or um, maybe Bothy Band. As like Bothy Band is this like Irish folk band that um, for a long time was like my happy music. It, it, it's it's interesting because I feel like we've moved away from listening to whole albums, but I feel like. Uh, you know, in the same way that to go to one of your concerts and hear the entire set is to get the experience of you and not just to hear individual songs. Yeah. Probably we're losing out on a bit of that whole album experience these days, aren't we? I agree. And I think it's a shame not to listen to the whole album because I know that um, my favourites and the greatest albums are made to be listened to all the way through, like it's a piece. Um, you know, not necessarily putting your hits first and second and um and then all the crappy stuff later i mean we're talking like an actual like symphonic work of art that you're supposed to listen to from start to finish and with beautiful artwork and beautiful production and th there's no one more symphonic than bjork at the moment is there i mean you've you've yeah. interpreted her music before but what what is it what is it that draws you to her music in particular I love her originality. My favorite artists are ones who are doing something that you've never heard anything like it before. That's what really inspires me. And gosh, who does that better than Bjork? You know, she's just like, you can never really predict what she's going to do next. And she's constantly reinventing herself. And I just really admire her for that. And uh, she, she uses technology, but she used, as, used in, in such a natural way as mm -hmm. well, which is uh, something, that, something that I like. But um, also, every one of her albums is always different. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you've striven towards yourself, trying to make something that's constantly different every time you make new music? Fortunately slash unfortunately, I don't have to try. Um, sometimes that is a, a blessing and sometimes it's a curse. Um, but... Yeah, I'm always inspired to make art that is authentic to wherever I am in any given day of my life. And I think the nature of human beings is that we're constantly changing. I mean, they say scientifically seven years later, you're a completely different body of cells than you were seven years before. And so I think our music is the same way if we're really staying honest. Okay. So in a minute we'll hear, hear another song from you, but um, you, you seem to go for quite a stripped-down sound. It's, uh, I, I mean, there is a trend in folk these days to go for technology, to, to loop things and to use computers, but uh, it seems from listening to you like you've almost gone the other way. Is that, uh, is that a deliberate attempt to get back to the roots of where folk came from? Well, um, I mean, if you listened to... If you listened to one of the records, like for example, the most recent one that I did is not so stripped down and in fact has like a lot of really intricate layering. But um, what I love so much about playing s the music solo is that you get to hear it stripped down and you get to hear it in its most kind of vulnerable and um, in, in, in its earliest form. Like, it's kind of like newborn form, the way that it came out, you know? So this is how it was when you were writing it originally? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, where is your writing place? Do, do you have a safe place where you, go, where you go to write these songs? Slowly but surely, I'm turning my apartment into that. Um, but when you're home, there's often more distractions than if you have the opportunity to, like, go somewhere and shut internet, internet off for... A few days. Um, I went once to my aunt's house in the mountains of um, northern Virginia and I was like up up in the mountains and had a fireplace and no distractions and that was some of the most productive writing I've ever had. I also really love writing by the ocean but you know I can't just snap my fingers and... <laughs> yeah I was going to ask about New York because Obviously, New York is not, uh, it's not anywhere near nature. So um, mm. how, how, how do you get that natural vibe back to your music when you're in New York and you're trying to write there? Uh, put some plants in your apartment, I guess. <laughs> but it, it's a bit <laughs> like different. drop some sand on the floor. and It's a bit different to being by the lake or by the ocean or something, isn't it? Very much so, unfortunately. I, th I think if, I often feel like if I had an apartment that had windows that looked out onto like a, green field or an ocean or a lake or something that I would just wake up and write music every day. 
but grass is always greener. So that's your dream, to find, to find a country home or somewhere by the lake where you, where you can live in the future? Or instead of buying a home to keep all that money for vacations twice a year like, you know, like Europeans do. <laughs> Sounds like an awesome plan. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for chatting to me, Becca. Yeah, and thank um, you. This is Jazz Car 2016 with the Andy Vibes, and we're talking to Becca Stevens, who's going to play one final tune. So what are you going to play for us? I'm going to play Traveler's Blessing, which is, um, which is one that is inspired by my Irish music upbringing that we were talking about. And um, yeah, it's from my album Weightless.